Okay, I'm going to explain motor controls in a traditional sense um, and give you a brief understanding of what's going on with a magnetic starter and a manual starter and what the difference is. And I'm only going to use NEMA style uh, uh, gear. This is a motor control switch and they come in a number of different sizes based on the horsepower. This one in particular is rated um, up to three horse and it's a size zero. These go up to size three and that you size based on the horsepower. So this one will switch a one horsepower, uh, uh, sorry, a three horsepower at 600 volts and a two horsepower at 220 volts, three phase. Uh, okay, uh, and they're always labeled the same. L1, L2, L3, which is the power side, and T1, T2, and T3, the motor side. And how these work is with a little coil, which is right there. You can see the wire on both sides of the coil. And when that coil is energized, it pulls that switch shut. It's a magnet, and it just draws those switches shut. And you can see the contacts right there, okay, making contact. And if the voltage stays on that coil, it holds that switch on, okay? Uh, you'll notice on this switch that there are four contacts, one for each lead, and one is an auxiliary <clears throat> for control switching. So this is what switches the power on the motor. It takes the full voltage of the motor and you never come in contact with it. What you come in contact with are these little tiny switches. And these switches, in this case, are momentary. In other words, you just push them and they release. And they switch the coil amperage, which is really low and really safe. That's what makes these um, safe for industrial machines. You're able to switch large amperage uh, motors very safe with low voltage common switches. You don't ever come in contact with the high amperage. Now, these can be switched in two basic ways. One is called two wire. And two wire means there's two wires controlling that coil voltage. This is a toggle switch. And this is what's called a maintain switch. In other words, what that means is, is it's not like this switch that when you push it, it lets off. It's only momentarily signaling the control. And as soon as you let go, it stops that. But a maintain switch is like a toggle switch or a light switch it maintains contact and has two wires like a light switch and just switches that coil wire. So in other words, if you throw this on, it turns the power onto that coil, the coil draws the, the big contactor closed and the motor runs and you shut that off. That is basically the simplest way to run a magnetic starter. Now the other way is with momentary switches. Once again, these momentary switches you just push and they release. On the back of those, they have a little contactor, okay? And they signal the coil to come on or off. Now those are called, those are used in three wire and on generally every one of these contactors you will see here's another one okay once again you see that's l1 l2 l3 that's where the power comes in you'll see t1 t2 and t3 that's where the motors always go now you'll also see a three a two 
and a 1, or in this case it's marked NC, which stands for normally closed. And how these work, I'll explain later, but I'm going, uh, um, three wire uses a holding contact switch, and I'll explain that in further depth. All I want you to, to understand is, is that this is not a switch for a motor. This is the switch for a motor. These are control switches. That's different from motor switches. They are only used to control the voltage of the coil. Now you would think that that is a control switch but that's not always the case this one actually is a a um, not a momentary like this these are maintained switches an actual voltage of the motor goes through these these are like for drill presses and stuff like this so it, 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 you need to understand that there's components to these control switches, which this one really is a motor rated switch, a main twain switch, just like this one is. You can actually run full motor voltage through that. Here is a low amperage control, and this is a rotary switch. Those are the contacts. They're not rated for a full motor. I'm not sure the amperage rating. This is a Princess Auto one. This is also a momentary maintained switch as well. And let me explain what the differences are. When you're looking for control switches, you need to understand that they're either momentary, which means you just push and they release, or you push, you push and they stay in a position. You push and they maintain a position. Okay? Uh, this one in particular is, is Princess Auto and uh, you twist it to come on, you shut it to come off, or vice versa. The second thing about, so when, you, when you're looking for these types of switches, you need to know the function that you want the knob to do. In other words, I want it to, I want it to stay on when I push it, and I want it to come off when I come it off. Um, here's Here's an industrial AB switch, much more robust than the Princess Auto one, but it's the same principle. This one is, uh, this one is push on, pull off. Okay, um, this one is just momentary. Okay, the second thing you have to understand is that these come with little contactor blocks. In this case, from Princess Auto. Auto, they give you two on them, and a lot of machine manufacturers have this now. And on each one of these, you'll see that there's a red and there's a green. In those positions, you, uh, the little contactors inside there are making a connection. So in this position, there is contact on the green. When I twist and release, there is contact on the red. And you'll see the, you can see those contactors moving in there. Those are referred to as normally open or normally closed when they're in a momentary. Okay, so uh, you can see on this switch that there are two locations. One is normally open when it's sitting still or normally closed. So when you use the momentary, you are breaking that contact. So now that you understand that that is not a motor 
rated switch, that is a control switch, and that you need to understand what the knob function is. Okay, in other words, this one in particular is a rotary knob. It has three positions. It has to the left, which controls that one. They're both on, as opposed to this one, which you can see is green and red, which is, that's off, on, to keep you organized. But that this one, in that position, turns to the far right, turns this one on, makes contact switch. In the middle position, neither or on, and in the right position, turns that on. So it's a little rotary switch. So its command up front is different from this one, which is a lockout switch. Push it, it stays. It's not like a stop that comes back, okay? And when you twist it, it opens up. So this is a this is a slap on, twist off, or lock off, reuse again. Okay? So really there's three components to a control switch. The knob function, the body, and the contactors function. Either normally on or normally closed is what they'd call that, off, okay? You can have lights, okay, which have connections for them, okay, and a number of things. Now, in relationships to VFDs, uh, we are going to use these to control the VFD, and they're the same. There is L1, L2, L3, just the same as the traditional motor, L1, L2, L3. That's just the power coming in. L, I believe, stands for load. And then you have T1, T2, <coughs> and T3, which is the motor load. What we have here in the traditional sense is where our control wires connect to just like the traditional model uses small voltage, small amperage switches and in here are all of the connections and numbers for the controls. So when we look at a VFD, we are concerned with two types of things here. We're concerned with the power for the motor going in and out which the main unit switches, just as I've said, this is what switches the power of the motor to pull the contact shut and make the big contact amperage. And these controls switch the coil in that or switch the electronics in this. That is the same. You need to understand what the differences are with these switches, that these are not control switches, okay? Um, and I will not be discussing, uh, well, here you can see I took just a regular industrial square D box that did hold uh, these, and I stripped it out, and I put a VFD in there. Okay, I cut a little window out in plexiglass, so when you close I can read the screen. I've got a reversing switch here, which is, that is a maintain switch. It's not a push button let go switch. And I'm running, this is not conventional, so I don't really want anybody to do this, but there, that, that power should go directly to the motor. This one has a twist lock and my communication cables are running through CAT5 for the switching control. This allows me to plug in other VFDs, other machines to this VFD, and hook its commands through a CAT5 so I don't have to reconfigure that. But here you can see the control wires are hooked up in this small band here. The power wires to the motor are there. Uh, 
T1, T2, T3, and the input wires are there. Um, and this is, this, is, uh, this is the size wire I'm controlling with, and that is controlled from a manual starter, which look, okay? Okay? And so that's one cheap enclosure that's good. It's got lots of things. And uh, I can see the drive through a little window. It keeps the dust out. Okay? So that's uh, motor control basics from a woodworker who's had a shop for 27 years. Thank you.